What's up YouTube, I'm White Coat Gamer and the day has finally arrived where I get to reveal my new PC build. If you're new to my channel, I'm a doctor who loves gaming, but if you've been here for a while, you know that I mentioned recently that I built a new PC and you've just been waiting for that video to drop. Well, today is the day. If you enjoy the content today, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below of things you like, things you would change, what you would do differently, or maybe your own build and I'll check it out. Without further ado, let's introduce the White Coat PC. Starting off, we'll introduce the wonderful Height Y60 case. I know you've probably seen many videos of this case because it gained popularity over the summer. Ever since I first saw this case, I had my eyes on it because of a few extra modifications you can make to it, and you may see some of those later on. We'll start off here by taking off all of the panels, beginning with the front panel, back, and then the top where the fans will go in. Some people complain about this case and the space that you get. It definitely is not an air cooling case, but we are going with water cooling as you'll see later. As you see here, we did go with the Corsair SP120 RGB Elite fans. I got a four pack that does come with the Lightning Node Core because I put three in the top and then I will be putting one on the rear that you can see back here. Full disclosure, I do sort of regret not getting the Leon Lee Uni fans. The reason I went with this is because my AIO is going to be Corsair and I thought it'd be easier if I could have everything synced up with IQ. However, this may be something that I change in the future, so stay tuned for a later video. Now getting into the meat of the build, you'll see that I got the ASUS Prime X670E Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. Obviously with this motherboard, I went with an AM5 chipset, which you will see later. One of the key features that I wanted with this board is to stick to the all white theme, matching the height Y60, as well as I wanted plenty of connectivity because in my old build, this is something I ran into being a streamer and content creator, not having enough connectivity. Moving along with storage, we did go with a Samsung 980 Pro one terabyte drive. We followed that up with a two terabyte crucial P5 plus drive. Plans for these drives is I'll keep the most important things on the one terabyte Samsung drive and then the mass storage of videos, content, as well as bigger games will go on to the crucial drive. Moving on to arguably one of my favorite parts about this build is the RAM. As you see here, we did go with the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. This specifically is the 5200 megahertz edition. I did get four sticks of 16 gigabytes each totaling 64 gigabytes. Yeah, I did want to stick to a specific color scheme and overall theme. And once again, we went with another Corsair product just to allow us to use IQ to its fullest potential and not have a whole bunch of other softwares to control our lights. One of my favorite parts about building this PC was inserting the RAM. Now, actually, it was a little bit harder to do so, harder than I remembered whenever I built my first PC. But here we go where we're able to click in all four sticks of RAM and we have to do that extra security check at the end to make sure they're not too wobbly and that they're inserted fully. And moving on to another heavy hitter of this build, we do have the AMD Ryzen 9 7900X. I stuck with AMD for a CPU because I came off of a 5800X that I absolutely adored. And I stayed with the 7900X compared to the 7950X because I believe the 50X was just a little bit more performance that I probably wouldn't use and it wasn't worth that extra price jump. Here we are installing the riser cable for the Height Y60. When this case first came on the market, this is actually one of the first things that caught my eye. When planning my build, I really wanted my new GPU to be the focal point. I wanted it to be the centerpiece of my build and I felt the best way to do that was to have it mounted vertically. So whenever I saw that the Height Y60 came bundled with the riser cables, I knew that this is what I needed. Especially combining it with that panoramic view, it really puts your GPU front and center. In this shot, I am already installing my all-in-one liquid cooler. For this, I did go once again with a Corsair brand and I went with the H100 Capellix liquid cooler. I chose to go with the H100 240 millimeter radiator, which is a two fan addition because I felt that it looked more aesthetically pleasing having the radiator on the side. On the back here, I am connecting the Commander Core, which controls my AIO and the fans that go with it, as well as the Lightning node that came with all of my Corsair SP120 fans. This allows me to use IQ to sync them all together and control the patterns that they will display. And here we are with another Corsair product. Now this is my PSU. I did go with the Corsair RM1000E. Now this is a 1000 watt power supply unit. It is fully modular, so I only had to use the cables I needed, which does help with cable management. Not that I did the best job with that. Anyways, please disregard the back of my case. 
What I liked about the E edition of this PSU is that it just made it run a little bit quieter so we didn't have that extra noise with another component of your PCU. And for the main event, ladies and gentlemen, here is the GPU. We did go with the Gigabyte Aero 4080. Now, I know there are a lot of strong feelings about the new generation of GPUs, specifically NVIDIA and specifically the 4080. The reason I went with this specifically is because at the time, this was the only all white new gen GPU. I did originally intend to go with AMD. I actually was a fan of AMD and I really wanted them to win this generation. However, once their launch finally came out, which I did wait to buy my GPU until AMD fully launched as well, I was not too fond or too impressed with the reviews and the price to performance of AMD did not really outshine the price to performance complaints that people had with the 4080. No matter your feelings about the 40 series or the 4080 specifically, you have to admit that this card is gorgeous. It perfectly matches my new height white 60 build and the all white theme of it. So it was a no brainer for me. Now, I was able to snag a deal at Micro Center and get this card for about $150 off of the MSRP, so it was a little bit better of a price to performance ratio for me. Here I am installing it in that vertical orientation and it just looks magnificent. This is one of the main reasons I went with this case to be able to put whatever GPU I purchased on full display. Having it cover up the lower portion of the case allows you to just accentuate that all white theme and kind of covers up some of the other areas that have a lot more of the black in there. I made sure that everything was screwed down tight because I didn't want any sagging because this is a heavy card. And once everything got down nice and tight, we had one more time spin the fans. I think I did this about a million times during this build and I couldn't get enough. Here we are with one of my least favorite parts of the build that was connecting this adapter. Now there are a couple of things with the adapter. For one, I had to make sure that I was able to route the cable underneath these fans because I didn't want it sticking out too much and disrupt the overall theme that I was going with while still having in the back of my mind that Nvidia did have an issue with their cables and the connections not being the best. I know this was mainly with the 4090s, but I didn't want to take any chances. Here we are taking the bottom case fans of the height Y60 off. This is a key component of this case, believe it or not, because of how big this GPU is, it does actually come up close to that front panel glass. You'll see that towards the end. But having these fans on the bottom, which are intake fans, we are able to offset some of that tight space. So far, my thermals have been fine and I haven't had any issues. Once again, if you do want specifics about that, just let me know. Here we are routing the PSU cables. One additional aspect that I want to add to this PC that you will not see in this video today is I do want to get an all white cable adapter for my 4080. Cable mod has some options. I just have not definitively decided on which I want so far. With me routing these cables to the bottom of the case, the connections directly to the PSU do not matter as much. It's really only adapter that you can see from the front. So stay tuned in the future as I will be swapping that out for an all white edition. Here we are putting the bottom fans back on and there are no issues with any cables getting tangled, hitting up against fans, having improper airflow. Everything has been going smoothly so far. Now what PC build is complete nowadays without having some sort of Leon Lee Strimmer Plus cables? And to finalize my AIO, we did go with the LCD screen upgrade from Corsair. Now what this allows you to do is it adds an LCD screen to the H100 Capital X or the H150 if you have that as well. It allows you to install different themes, GIFs, other images onto this CPU cooler or you can use it to display your statistics. I won't be needing that myself as you'll see later on. And that is because we are deciding to install an LCD display on this height Y60. This is the most unique aspect of this case that I absolutely fell in love with whenever I saw these specific mods. This is a 12.6 inch display LCD that I bought on Amazon. It fits perfectly in this side panoramic panel on the height Y60. Here I am measuring just to make sure everything fits together. Then I take off that plastic covering. I get the ribbon cable nice tucked away, and then we are able to install this. And what PC build is really complete without a Funko Pop to go on the interior? This one looks like someone I know specifically, especially when we're at work. But here we are, get that little guy in there and it looks amazing. Put the front panel back on and we are complete. Introducing to the world, 
the White Coat Gamer PC. It's been a long four years saving and waiting for this, and I couldn't be happier. As we make new additions, as we change things up, I'll be sure to give updates and look at this LCD screen front and center, fitting perfectly in that panoramic view, displaying all of my stats using A to 64. Well, everybody, I'm White Coat Gamer. If you appreciated this video, make sure you leave a like and a subscribe. Until next time.